Hello, uh, good to see everyone. Uh, welcome to English as a Second Language, um, the online classes. So uh, I'm Carrie Waldrop, a level three teacher. And so I'm happy to instruct you today online. And let's get started. So welcome back class. It's great to see you, uh, level three students. And let's do it. So today, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at an introduction to Unit 7. The topic is shopping. Uh, so as we begin, I will ask you a few questions to think about. And today, I will also guide you to learn some idioms relating to shopping and also some American cultural habits relating to shopping. So um, as we begin, let's think about a few questions. So do you like to shop? Um, if so, uh, where do you shop? And on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable do you feel shopping in English? Uh, one being not comfortable, uh, five so-so, and 10, excellent. So think about that to yourself. Um, I would imagine that some of you might feel a little bit uncomfortable. So I hope that in this chapter, uh, we will get some good vocabulary, some good knowledge and information relating to how we can have a successful shopping experience. So uh, also during this time of the COVID-19 virus, how are you shopping? I assume that you might be shopping online. Uh, perhaps you're like me going to the store uh, maybe once every two weeks with masks and gloves and, and so on. So um, normally, do you prefer to shop online or in the store? Okay, so idioms relating to shopping and cultural tips. Uh, you'll notice my, my hand there. It's actually a picture of my hand. So we'll keep going. So some idioms to learn and practice. So I will uh, introduce these expressions. As you know, these are informal English expressions. So use them in conversation, daily conversation. So I will say it and please repeat after me. The first one, shop till you drop. Shop till you drop. Okay, the next, shopping spree. Shopping spree. Third, it costs an arm and a leg. It costs an arm and a leg. Four, it's a steal. It's a steal. Okay, the next, bargain hunt. Bargain hunt. Okay, say these words to yourself. Next, it's a ripoff. It's a ripoff. You can guess this one is a little bit negative. Okay, shopping therapy. Shopping therapy. Next, window shopping window shopping i think you know this one and finally shop around shop around okay so we have quite a few idioms here that we will talk about the definitions uh, one by one and i'll give you some examples to go along so the first one shop till you drop so you notice that until is shortened to till, shop till you drop. And sometimes the U is also shortened to ya, Y-A, shop till you drop. One more time, okay? Now the definition is to shop all day long until you are so tired that you just fall down. Okay, an example, my mother always took me shopping 
with her all day long. And I was so tired afterwards, but my mom told me, shop till you drop. Okay. So this is a true story. And my mother loved to shop and she would always take me shopping all day. So I learned this expression early in my life. Okay. So uh, moving on to the next one, shopping spree. Okay. The, you notice these are two words connected together. The definition to go crazy shopping and buying and usually it means fast. Okay. An example, she won a free $500 value shopping spree with Walmart. Okay. Uh, I'd prefer another store, but, um, a shopping spree often it is a sort of contest or, uh, there's a competition where perhaps the prize is winning a shopping spree. Uh, so, but if I also go on a shopping spree, that means I will shop uh, all day long, buying, buying, buying many, many things. So this we call a shopping spree. Okay, the next one, it costs an arm and a leg. Okay, this sounds strange. It's not a literal meaning, meaning I lose an arm and a leg. No, uh, this one is a symbolic meaning. Okay, the definition is it's too expensive. I cannot afford to buy it. I don't have enough money. So it is negative, negative meaning. Uh, for example, I saw a refrigerator that I really like, but it costs an arm and a leg. Maybe I should save some money and buy it later. Okay. I'm going to move this down a bit. There we go. Okay. So we have the definition here and the example of it costs an arm and a leg. Moving on. Uh oh, seem to have lost my cursor. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Next one, it's a steal. And the definition, it's so affordable and cheap. I cannot believe that I can afford to buy it. I can afford to buy it. It's like walking away with the object for free. For example, wow, I saw a real Gucci handbag for $100. I can't believe it was so cheap. What a steal. So I hope this one makes sense. Next, we have uh, several variations of the same term. Uh, first, bargain hunt, then bargain hunter. Next, bargain hunting. You're missing a uh, cutoff there, the T-I-N-G. So a definition, uh, to go on a search for the perfect price for something you really want to buy, uh, to look everywhere and compare prices for the cheapest price. Okay, an example. I went on a bargain hunt to find the best rug for my living room. After searching many websites, finally I found the perfect price and quality on Amazon.com. Okay, so uh, the meaning here is searching, looking, uh, looking for the perfect price, the perfect item, bargain hunting. I'm a bargain hunter, I think. Okay, the next one, it's a ripoff. So this one you can see is a negative term. It's also slang. So use this in informal conversation. And the definition is the price is too expensive. Someone is trying to steal my money or maybe cheat me. Also, the quality could be poor for the high price. 
Uh, or it could be a fake product for the same price. Okay. You'll see the pictures there, the real uh, handbag and the fake handbag at the same price. And for example, I paid $40 for a new pair of shoes and two days later, the shoes broke. What a ripoff. Okay. So let's practice that one again with the voice tone. It's a ripoff. It's a ripoff. All right. So we need a strong stress on the first word ripoff. Okay. The next one shopping or shop therapy. Uh, the definition is to use shopping and spending money as a help to feel better emotionally. If you notice the picture below, a woman is receiving some counseling or therapy. Uh, she doesn't feel well. And on the next uh, slide, you see the ladies are shopping, uh, going crazy shopping. So the example, uh, it's been a terrible week. Let's do some shop therapy at the mall. Okay, this is a fun activity. Um, men or women could say this expression, but I would say probably more women may use this phrase. Okay, shop therapy. Next, window shopping. I think everybody knows this one and probably enjoys this one. Uh, the definition is to shop by only looking in windows. So noticing the pictures below, um, it means you do not spend any money, just looking. Example, I normally do a lot of window shopping because I can't afford to buy many things these days. Okay, window shopping is, is fun. It's fun to look. Very common expression. Okay, and next we have a phrasal verb, meaning uh, two words together to act as a verb. Shop around. The first is the verb and the second is a preposition. So the definition is to look for many places um, uh, for something or to keep looking until you find the perfect item. And sometimes it could also mean a situation, the perfect situation. Uh, perhaps also a relationship or maybe a school or a certain program. Uh, so we can use this phrase in different situations. Uh, for example, uh, the first one is a situational example. He's not the best guy. Why don't you shop around for a better partner? Okay, this one means uh, it's not a good situation. Keep looking, keep looking. Okay, example B. I haven't found the best iPhone yet. I need to keep shopping around. Okay. Um, there's also a song called Shop Around. Uh, maybe you can uh, Google the song Shop Around and see what you think. Okay. The next one. Um, relating to these idioms, um, I think it's also important to talk about <clears throat> excuse me, talk about some cultural habits or practices uh, relating to shopping in the USA. And I'm sure that you probably might uh, know this already, but uh, it is not common to bargain in the US, um, especially um, any store that already has a set price. If you see a price tag, uh, do not bargain. Okay. This includes uh, department stores, uh, specialty stores, grocery stores. So the second point, uh, bargaining, it could be okay in certain situations. Uh, for example, a flea market. Uh, this is a term 
for a large uh, public uh, shopping area. Um, could be in a parking lot or a large warehouse building. Uh, the term is flea markets. Okay. Um, another place could be a farmer's market if the objects or the fruit or the, the vegetables are not priced. Perhaps also um, in the neighborhoods, for example, a garage sale or a sidewalk sale. Uh, these are very informal shopping experiences uh, where objects probably do not have a price. Um, in that situation, it's okay to bargain. Um, okay, now uh, the third point, it's only acceptable to ask for a small discount in a specialty store or um, uh, let's see, department store, if that you notice there is a small problem or defect on the object. If that's the case, you could ask. Uh, I have asked before, but you should only expect a small discount. For example, 10% off, 15% off maximum. Okay, I hope those tips are helpful for shopping in the USA, all right? And now, let's continue to move on to introduce vocabulary for Unit 7. Um, so, uh, first I will introduce the, um, the new words here. Ask yourself, do you know any of these words already? I'm sure that you do. So um, if you are following along, looking in your student textbook, which is the green color book, uh, Ventures 3, okay? It's on page 85. I'm pulling these words from page 85. Um, as well, I challenge you to pause the video and practice listening to exercise two on page 85. Uh, but I will introduce these words first that are in the gray box. Okay, let's uh, say these together. Afford, afford, balance, balance, cash, cash, okay, credit, credit, fifth, debt, debt, you notice that the B is silent, debt, financing, financing, interest, interest, okay, first syllable has a stress, Pay off, pay off. It's a phrasal verb. Finally, suggests, suggests, okay? Uh, then if you notice here, um, afford is a verb. Usually it can be connecting with can afford or can't afford. Balance can be a noun or a verb. And later I will give examples. Cash and credit are also nouns and verbs, uh, depending on the situation. Debt is a noun. Financing can be a noun or a verb. Interest is a noun. Okay, this is a different meaning from interested. I am interested in something. This is a different meaning. Okay, pay off, phrasal verb, and suggests is a verb. Uh, what's the noun? Suggests? Suggestion. You got it. Okay, so here are the, the main vocabulary words we will introduce first from the, the textbook. Okay, now let's look at them specifically. Okay, the first uh, verb, afford definition. 
is the ability to pay for something. Okay, positive or negative. Let's do a positive first. Oh, it's very affordable. I can pay for it. Okay, affordable is the adjective form in the same uh, word family. Okay, example B is negative. I can't afford this item. It's too expensive, too expensive. Okay, um, we could also use this word in different situations, not about money. For example, um, I can't afford to miss class. We have a big important test next week. Okay, example, not yet, don't worry. Okay, balance can be a noun or a verb also. The noun form. I have a high balance in my checking account. So the amount of money I have is high, is high. The verb form, I need to balance my checking account. So I need to organize or arrange my money to balance. Uh, so if you notice the noun form, there is an article, a, a high balance. The verb form, we have an infinitive, to plus a verb. Okay, so now the definition, basic meaning is uh, the amount of money that you have or own in the bank. Okay. Next is cash. So cash, we think this for coins, but uh, we think about this action for paying cash. Could also be a noun or a verb. So the definition, as I mentioned, is paper money. Okay, example for a noun form. I have a lot of cash in my pocket. I should be careful. Okay, the verb form. I need to cash my work check, which means to get physical money from a payment through a paper check. Okay, now, um, cash could also have different phrasal verbs. For example, cash in and cash out. Cash in or cash out. Uh, usually these have specific situations that they should be used. So let's do cash in. Now this could relate to playing a game or gambling. Uh, for example, I've already won $200. I'd like to cash in my chips for money. So exchange my winnings for cash. Okay. Cash out example. The business is not successful. We should cash out before it's too late. So leave or stop the business. Okay. Uh, we could use in different situations um, as well. Thinking about uh, leaving something um, and just turning in, turning in. Okay, credit can be a noun or a verb also. Uh, the basic definition is money added to you uh, before a payment. So a uh, noun form. I have $20 credit on my Macy's card. It's extra money in the bank for me. Okay. And the verb form. Can you credit the money to my account? So that means uh, put the money towards my account. Okay. Now another meaning we all know is credit card. So that is a specific object, um, meaning not using cash or coins. So, um, okay, in this case, we're using it um, as a noun or a verb. Another expression that you hear a lot uh, when you buy a house or a car, do you have good credit? Or my credit is good, my credit is bad. Okay, uh, the next word, debt. The noun form 
is the amount of money that you owe something you need to pay. And the implication is that sometimes you are not able to pay. Okay. Now, um, a related word similar but different is debit. For example, debit card. Um, so I could also use this as a noun or a verb. The verb form is a uh, debit my account, meaning take out money from my account. Okay. The noun form debit card. Okay. Very specific use, specific word. Okay. So two more words, credit and debt. Okay. The next two words are financing and interest. Financing, you can see, can be a noun or a verb. And the definition is arranging, organizing, or using money. So uh, you notice this verb has ing, ing. The noun form. Example, let's work on financing our trip to Europe. Maybe not now at this time, but hopefully in the future. Okay, uh, the verb form, she's refinancing her house, meaning she is reorganizing the payment on her house. Okay, uh, moving on to interest is a noun. Okay, uh, money owed, if I have a debt and it has interest, that means the the owed amount is growing or building up over time. Example, I have a 7% interest on my credit card. So now I owe blank dollars. Okay. Okay, and uh, two more pay off phrasal verb is to complete a payment on something that you owe. Example, I will soon pay off my car after next month's payment. So you see the verb and the uh, preposition together, me making it a phrasal verb. Okay, uh, next is a verb suggest suggest to offer an idea or a solution for a problem. So you know the noun form is suggestion, yes. Uh, example, I suggest that you talk to the bank about your increasing debt. Perhaps you can get a loan, okay? I, I am giving some advice or suggestion. Okay. Okay. Now um, I'm going to quickly move on to uh, a grammar point that you will see on the next page, 86. Okay. And the question uh, words, how much and how many, how much, how many. So uh, as you know, how much, is used with non-count nouns. Okay, uh, what do I mean by non-count? For example, uh, time, money, work, education, um, energy. These are words we cannot count. Okay, example, how much time have you got to spend with me? Um, okay, now, how many we use with count nouns? So count nouns, uh, for example, chairs, books, glasses, pens, okay? Something that I can count, okay? So example, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Okay, this one is tricky because we know that shoes, one pair of shoes has two shoes. 
but we count the pair together. So how many pairs of shoes do you have is what the, the count noun. Okay, um, now if you are following along still, if I have your attention, um, you can pause for a moment and uh, listen to exercise two on page 85. Listen again if you have already listened and you will practice using how much and how many, okay? So uh, what are they talking about in this situation? Uh, count or non-count nouns, and which expression do you hear? Okay, all right. So I'll move on. So now it comes to uh, my recommendation, as I always say, uh, practice makes perfect. You must practice. Uh, we have learned a lot of vocabulary and some idioms that are very useful for daily life. So now we have to be creative because we have social distancing, meaning we cannot really go out and, and talk to people. So other ways to be creative, um, call a friend with a video chat, uh, talk on the phone, using Skype, using uh, Facebook Messenger or Kakao Talk. Uh, see if you can make maybe a daily practice, uh, maybe the next few days. Try to use or practice as many words as you can. Also, uh, you will see below, I have listed a link. Uh, so you can click on this link and this will en enable you uh, help you to do more practice and also check your answers. Okay. So, um, it's a little bit of practice with how much and how many. Okay. So, uh, continuing on, uh, this is the, uh, end of segment one. And so I would like to stop here and uh, the next time we uh, discuss, meet together, I will introduce more grammar, especially modals, okay? Lesson B, lesson C. So I look forward to joining you um, in this online adventure. I hope that we can work together and learn, okay? So have a very good day. Uh, day or good evening, um, and I will see you soon.